This is David with The Verge, and these are Sony's new lens cameras, the QX10 and the QX100. They're two totally different cameras, but are almost the exact same concept. That concept is this. Your smartphone is the perfect camera, except for the whole taking great pictures part. The QX10 and QX100 are, by themselves, full-fledged cameras. They have sensors, processors, even a slot for a micro SD card. There's no viewfinder on either to see what you're shooting, but they're a lot like a GoPro. You just turn it on and start firing. There's even a zoom control and shutter button on each one. They look like lenses, sturdy black plastic cylinders, the $249 QX10 about six ounces and an inch tall, and the $499 QX100 both larger and heavier, but these are cameras. Even though you don't technically need it, your smartphone is still the key piece of the lens camera equation. When you connect to the lenses using Sony's Play Memories mobile app for Android or iOS, your phone takes over all the operation of the devices. You can zoom, change settings, and take pictures. The two ports connect via ad hoc Wi-Fi, which is really easy to do if your phone supports NFC. You just tap the lens in your phone together, and your phone either automatically launches the Play Memories app or takes you to the store to download it. You can technically use the QX lenses with any smartphone as long as the app is supported, but it's really designed for NFC capable Android phones, like, you know, the ones Sony makes. Every time you take a picture, the full size image is stored on the micro SD card inside the QX camera. You really need a card, partly because you can't shoot video at all without one. A small version is also sent straight to your phone for easy sharing. You can set the camera to send the whole file each time, which takes a lot longer, but is really worth it. Why shoot gorgeous 20 megapixel shots and only share tiny versions? Plus, playing around with huge files and editing apps is really fun. On one hand, the lens cameras are pretty remarkable. The 18 megapixel QX10 has a sensor about the same size as the average point and shoot, and much bigger than just about any smartphone, and it does take pictures that are noticeably better than a smartphone in almost any situation. Nothing fantastic, and there are occasional issues with color and noise, it's just a fairly average point and shoot. But the biggest thing it offers is 10 times optical zoom. The QX100 is on an entirely different level. It has a virtually identical spec sheet to Sony's RX100, which is the best compact camera you can buy, period. It has a huge one inch sensor, a bright f1.8 Zeiss lens, 3.6 times optical zoom, and Sony's fast and capable processing chip as well. The 20 megapixel pictures it takes are just spectacular. In most cases, they're on par with the RX100, and in a lot of ways, this is a better experience. Since it's a point and shoot, you're probably mostly gonna shoot in auto anyway, and having a big touchscreen viewfinder and easy sharing to Instagram and Facebook is really nice. There's occasionally some lag with either camera, where you move the camera and the viewfinder can take a while to catch up. And the QX100 is bigger and a lot more unwieldy than the QX10, which clips pretty easily on any smartphone. But if you're going to buy an attachment for better pictures, you should get pictures that aren't just a little better than a smartphone. The QX100 is a lot better than a smartphone. The QX10 and QX100 may attach to your phone via a handy versatile clip that worked on every phone I tested, but they're big and heavy enough that you're not going to want them attached all the time. And if they're not attached all the time, they're just another thing to carry. Even if getting gorgeous pictures is worth the extra bulk in your bag, there are other issues to contend with as well. Every time you try to connect the camera to your phone, it takes five or 10 seconds before they're synced and ready to shoot. Then every time you leave the Play Memories mobile app, the two disconnect. The lag makes it hard even on still subjects too. The focus is always a little ahead of how it's shown on your phone, so it looks out of focus even while you're taking in-focus shots. The pictures look fine, but I never thought they were going to. Battery life was also fine. I got about 150 shots before the QX10 died, and a little less from the QX100. Frankly, I'm amazed that Sony made the QX10 and QX100 at all. It's absolutely the right idea. Adding a great camera onto the smartphone you already know and use seems like a much better idea than trying to hack a smartphone into your camera. If, in the next model, Sony can speed up its app and the process for connecting to the camera, these lens cameras might just be the perfect point and shoot. But until then, as much as I love the idea and almost want to buy a QX100 for myself, I don't think I'd ever use it. I bet you wouldn't either.